All right. There are a few still coming. We're a little slower today. I didn't get started on time like I like to, but uh, maybe it's my pace that I'm going to have this year, a little slower. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining, the, ever, joining us this morning to start the new school year. Back to school time is one of those things that's kind of a special, it's an exciting time for the students that come to your classroom, but I always have enjoyed this time. And there's an excitement, obviously, by the buzz that was in the room of connecting with people you might not have seen all summer. So it's really exciting to see everybody. And change is probably going to be the theme of this year, at least for me, probably for you guys as well. Everybody's been teasing me about this is the last, and this is the last, and it's going to be a year of last. I'm going to twist that and change it and say it's a year of opportunity. It's an opportunity for all of us to move things ready or forward for the future. So thank you to the, everybody to the cooks, the food service folks for breakfast this morning, the technology team, custodial staff, and all of you for the job you do each day. Um, just so you know, there's some technology changes and different things that occurred that I can address a little bit later, um, but I just kind of want to make you aware of some of that. With that, I'm going to introduce our school board members that were able to make it. Mr. Lorenz, the chair. <laughs> Mrs. Schutte, a board member. And Mr. Schneider, who I'm going to ask to come up and say a few words. Thank you, John. Well, it's a pleasure for me to be here in front of you, thanking you again for coming back. <laughs> Obviously, uh, in the, in the springtime, we said goodbye to everyone, some retiring, some taking other jobs, maybe some making some switches uh, within our district, uh, but we're glad to see everybody here uh, ready to go again for the new school year. You know, summer uh, starts out wet, we have a nice flood. I'm sure there's very few of you who probably didn't have some kind of damage from the flooding. I know I had a, over a foot of water across 400 feet of my driveway, which kept me home for about three or four days before it went down. Uh, thank goodness, very little if no damage and stuff. My house was dry, utilities, everything were working, so life was good. I got to rest up and not do anything for a few days. July got hot. You know, not everybody wanted to go out. and They enjoyed the dry weather, but the hot weather didn't make it as pleasant. And then we get to August and it cools off and now we're dealing with cool weather and right about now it seems to be just about right. We have the uh, cooler nights, we have the not so hot days and then, oh by the way, you gotta go back to work. So <laughs> not necessarily the most pleasant thing. But uh, we appreciate everybody's efforts in getting ready this year. We appreciate everybody's uh, enthusiasm for wanting to get back. And remember, uh, let me show everybody, everybody raise their hand for me. Everybody, raise your hand, everybody, because you're all going to be involved in this. Everybody's got their hand up. Every one of you just answered the question, yes, do I have children in school? Thank you. You may not have your own children in school, but you have other people's children, and they are your children when they walk through the doors or get involved in our programs. And every one of you, I'm sure, will treat them as your own, expect the best out of them, help them when they have troubles, and look over them and guide them when they need that, just as if they were your own children. So thank you very much for being here and everything you do for our children. So with that, and Ann Foley wrote up all these wonderful notes for me. I'll see if I can stay on track, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So in District 518, we have exceptional academics, outstanding athletics, great fine arts, and authentic relationships and connections. Thank you for everything you do to make that stronger. 
One of the quotes she put on here is, teachers who love teaching teach children to love learning. So that's an important aspect for all of you to remember as we move forward. With that, then, I'm going to move into the things that support not only you students, but the various summer projects and initiatives that have gone on to kind of help enhance those learning opportunities. So first of all, we have nine alumni who will be returning as either teachers or administrators to the district. So with that, I'm gonna do one little thing and since all of you had breakfast, we're gonna try something here and see if I can figure this out. I'd like everybody to stand up And I just want to kind of highlight the number of people who actually graduated from Worthington or are from Worthington. So those of you who did not graduate from Worthington or are from Worthington, please sit down. I want you to look around and the number of folks that are a part of our system that help make it strong and have gone through our system. We appreciate everyone in this room, but the fact that they're willing to come back and work in our district is awesome. So thank you. So middle school staff, I suspect you're gonna be excited about this one. The parking lot is finally finished. Been a long time coming on a new parking lot. So it should help for improvement of student staff transportation. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of an accident on one of our projects, the HVA units that were to be on the south end of the building. The crane broke and fell on one of the units. And so that, we're crossing our fingers, we'll get connected and taken care of in the next week. So hopefully that'll be completed. The last word I saw when I saw that is they're going to try and put the new units up on Wednesday. So those of you who are in those classrooms when they're doing that, you're going to have to relocate while they're lifting the units. <laughs> Please. <laughs> The Grow Your Own initiative, which is a partnership between Minnesota West, uh, SMSU, and the Worthington District has been going on for about 12 years now. Um, it's to remove barriers so we can help students enter the teaching profession. Currently this year, we hired two graduates from that program and we're excited to have them a part of our system. Here's the telephone story. All of you have new telephones. We have a new system. Please call tech, do not call me. Because right now I'm struggling with the new phones. So um, hopefully all of you who are tech savvy and understand all that, will have greater success than I've had. But it is a new phone system, which is awesome. We're upgraded because the old system they were gonna quit supporting. So please call tech with your telephone questions, not me. They'll be happy to assist you. So the, when I started 20, well, now it'll be 22 years ago. There were five things on my so-called list when I started that needed to get accomplished. And over time, you get them accomplished. The last of those five things, and don't ask me all five. I can remember the four, but I can't remember the fifth. Um, one was dealing with the group homes. One was dealing with Central Elementary. But the last one is West Elementary. It is now 
green over there, okay? Taking care of that item. So even though the grass is not plentiful and they'll do some reseeding, um, it is a green space in the community. Um, a couple other things that happened weren't necessarily our projects, but Church Avenue, which is on the east side of the high school, was resurfaced. City project and out of Prairie, there's new sidewalk or path or however you want to call it in front of that. That's a city project. And lastly, the project that we're working with the watershed is the, on the Kralsheim property is creating a pond and holding area for water um, to benefit the lake and the community. That project, hopefully they'll be bidding this fall and start work probably this winter, spring at the latest is the plan currently. The board made some decisions related to a couple things uh, that are out there. One is the purchase of 80 acres to the north of the Learning Center Community Ed Building. That project uh, has been outstanding because the Ag Department, along with working with the college and their ag instructors have started a learning lab. With that learning lab, they have planted soybeans and corn on that property. <coughs> and not only college kids, but high school students and middle school students can have the opportunity to have hands-on learning in that type of environment. And it's not just, the idea behind it is to help students understand the careers that exist in agriculture. And being an ag community, that's extremely important. You don't necessarily have to be a farmer to be involved in farming. There's engineers for equipment and you can go right down the line. Lots of careers that exist for people in this community. So that hands-on experience is outstanding and potentially 20 years or 30 years from now, that property will become something different. Um, much the same as Prairie Elementary, that ground was owned by the district for a very long time prior to Prairie even being constructed on that property. So oftentimes you have to look long-term futuristic to why you do some of those things. Um, much the same, I'll just bring it up at this point. I know it's later on, but I'll bring it up. The referendum did not pass, which means the upgrading of areas in this building in addition at this point will not occur until the board makes some further decisions. That was trying to look to the future and address needs, um, such as the cafeteria, the kitchen, some additional classrooms, um, dealing with some security things. And I'm gonna tell you personally, it was the most affordable referendum that any school district in the state of Minnesota would have seen. Um, you do not see school boards with the ability to put 55% of the cost on the district and 45% on the taxpayers. So it's disappointing, but there is a brighter future. We'll figure it out and we'll address and deal with the referendum um, in the planning process as the board moves forward this year. Uh, again, disappointing, but at this point, we'll find something different, and maybe the board will decide to do some of those things with the dollars they have set aside. So, on to letters. 
A number of you have been letters trained in this last year and will be starting the second year. A few will be jumping into the first year and we're excited to have some of our current employees trained as trainers so they're able to manage that and hopefully lower some of our costs related to that training aspect. Oh yeah, she's got, lastly, referendum. Circle the wagons. We do a lot of circling the wagons in education, primarily because we get legislative things pushed at us and we have to circle the wagons and figure it out. In education, we're great at figuring things out. It means you have to be adaptable, nimble, and willing to work as a group to get that accomplished. So with that, we're dealing on what's next. Well, staff are moving into new roles, new classrooms, some new adventures. We're excited to have new faces, and I had the opportunity last Monday to briefly visit with the new teachers that were coming, um, which is exciting. I always enjoy that. And again, we have a large number of new staff to the system, not only as teachers, but other employees such as paras or other positions. Um, one thing, I really didn't want to bring this up, but please remember to do your trainings that have come out. Um, if not, HR will keep sending you those little notes. Please get those done. And many of you probably know there's changes in my life that are going on. One, this is the last year. I plan to retire at the end of the year, not the middle, the end. So you're stuck with me for the year at this point. But we also sold our home and we moved into a new home. Last week was kind of a real change in flexibility, but opportunities. That's why maybe I'm a little sore and stiff this morning. I'm getting too old to do that. <laughs> Thank goodness we had a bunch of friends out in South Dakota that showed up and emptied all the heavy stuff out of the trailers. But as I was cleaning out some things, I wanted to explain a little bit to you because the majority of you probably have no idea where I grew up. I grew up in northwest Minnesota in a small town called Nielsville. And to give you an idea, it's about 45 miles north of Moorhead on Highway 75. Growing up there, it was a small town of about 275 people. Currently, it's probably a town that's more like 70. There's not a lot left. But I grew up in the grocery store, hardware store business that my parents owned. And as you know, what happened in the 80s and all that fun stuff, everybody became more mobile and they traveled to buy their groceries or a lot of those things. And really, the, that store became more of a, I need bread and milk tonight because we're out versus I need to do my shopping. So that was just part of it. That's part of the cycle of life. But I found something interesting as I was cleaning boxes and trying to, and oh, I'm gonna tell you, all of you, start purging now. <laughs> Good gracious. The more you purge now, it helps you out later on life. But I found this little statement from my folks' store. Cash Mercantile was the name of it. And on there, my dad, who um, grew up as a second generation immigrant from Norway in that small town. Um, in October, It'll be 40 years since he passed. 
So it's been a long time. With that, uh, on this little sheet, I found a couple things that are maybe pertinent to either my situation or even you. On here, it says, it's a great life if you don't weaken. You can think about it, but the other one really relates more to me. A house is only boards and nails and does not have any feelings, but people do. So, kind of the opportunity to provide a message to me. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, as you get older, emotions are closer to the surface. <laughs> Used to never have that 20 years ago. It's amazing how you change. So again, when I started out this morning talking about change and talking about opportunity, I want all of you to take every opportunity to welcome your kids, your neighbors, the people who work in this building, particularly those new staff. They're trying to find their way and work through, and it's going to be a big change for them. It's kind of like me changing. We moved last week. We had friends who showed up and emptied the trailers, but then they went and emptied my wife's apartment out, which we hadn't had time to pack up. Oh my goodness. I'm glad they did it, but talk about chaos, because it got piled in a room. And that change created an opportunity for us to clean up a mess and I don't have to go back and try and move out of our apartment. So it's awesome. But I came back last night and where I'm living I had just moved some things. I wasn't quite sure where everything was at. You know how you just put a tub in and some clothes. So with that I had to learn to slow down and be patient and probably why I'm a little off kilter this morning, but I think it sends another message that one, you have to take a step back, you have to realize where everything is going, and be patient. Be patient. Be patient with your kids, your colleagues, your others, and please be patient with me. I'll just ask. I'll try and make sure I do the great job that I'm able to do throughout the rest of this year. There's no coasting, okay? That's not really who I am. I'm not a coaster. I expect you guys to not be coasting. and that's where I'm going to, some people were teasing me about wearing a tie. Um, I think it's important to remember to set the expectations for the year. We are all professionals in whatever job you do, and you have to work hard to continue to be that professional. I did think about wearing my palm tree shirt and shorts, um, but this is probably more appropriate for the first day back. So I want to kind of end by saying a couple things. One. I appreciate the job you do each and every day. I want to thank you for being a part of this district. And please try and give 100% every day. I think that's important. So with that, I'm done. And I'm going to let you guys go off to the next breakout session building wherever you need to be. Hopefully you can follow the schedule that was put together. Thank you very much and have a great year.